Green Rising, my friends. What's up? Let's jump straight into it. No. We, we take a second to say what's up to the most beautiful subscribers in the Milky Way galaxy and encroaching upon several of the known galaxies close to us, Andromeda and as such, and others. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. Sit down, take a seat, and join us as we get on with our morning business and afternoon and our rising business, afternoon business. See, I'm slipping up myself. Gotta, even to change one's own thoughts, you have to kind of keep at it. It's not a um, an easy task. It takes, uh, but it can be done. And it and it's funny when it starts to become natural. I know my friends and I we joke about things, and we have something right now going with us where we have to constantly be aware of the words we use. And you know, when you catch yourself doing it naturally, <laughs> it's a great feeling. Crypto market is doing well. Plan B prediction for the stock to flow ratio i don't think i've ever showed the chart on here or went too much in depth in here and i probably need to show that and explain that at some point talking about price predictions i guess i'll do a video with the funny faces and um talking about price predictions to talk about using their um the market caps and stock to flow modeling that's where you can using the known existence of substance and the price over years you can predict future price but um Long story short, his prediction was for the market to probably be at around 63000 at the end of this month, October. And we're close. So, and that model then predicts at least about 100, it's anywhere between 100 and 288000 by the end of the year. So, less crazier things have happened in crypto, but, you know, most people will still be amazed when they see that. And if you thought you're getting inundated with shiba inu now wait till you see bitcoin at a hundred thousand that's what everybody well i know i should have bitcoin bitcoin but you of course like myself are already ahead of the game and we already know where this is going so we're going to be in all that i got some other new things i'm working on and i'll be talking to you it's far more speculative but hey with fifty hundred dollars you may or not not with the gas fees on ethereum oof the gas fees was less We'll see how they are on um, Avalanche and then, never mind, but I'll get to that at some point. Anyway, Bitcoin at 61,254, Ethereum 4,277, Binance is doing well this week, even though everything's a little bit down right now, but Binance has been doing really well. $518.75, Cardano down slightly, $1.97, Solana $191.87, XRP, 107 polka dot is at 42 dollars and 73 cents shiba inu is at four zeros seven zero dogecoin at 27 cents shiba inu is above dogecoin for several days in a row now like two or three couple days but it seemed like it'll get up to seven the market caps are consolidating at about a a, a width apart that you know we'll see in the next couple of days going down and avalanche is at $62.45. There's a protocol on avalanche that I'm going to try out uh called Wonderland where it's giving like 67,000% returns for the year, which sounds bonkers. <laughs> where you know, hey, save as accounts may gave you 0 0.04 or uh you know, 0 0.03 in terms of 67,000% for the year, so We'll see. Um, stock market ended the week pretty strong this week. Um, all of the indexes were up probably, I think, every day, if not every day, most days of this week. So stock market had a good week. Even you thought with all the problems they had, Tesla still had another 3% day yesterday. It ended the day at 100 I'm sorry, $1,114. So if you've been investing in Tesla, which... You know, if you listen to me, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of the, well, not so much a fan of anybody, but I, I, I believe that your money is safe going into that investment for the, at least the next decade or so, you know, 
you have already been reaping the benefits of that. Ethereum is burned. Remember, we were looking at it getting close to a billion. Now it's almost at 2.5 billion. Uh, of course, the price of uh, Ethereum has increased during that period, but the amount of Ethereum itself burned is close to now 700,000 per. Which is extraordinary. I mean, look, you know, you want to see things burn. Look, and I look, we're up to almost $700 burning per day. I mean, per hour. You know, this used to be like 200s, 300s, sometimes get to the fours. I think one day I saw like the fives. And when, I, when it came on to show you, I was back in the twos. And I was like, oh, they probably wouldn't believe me if I said it was in the fives. Now it's in the 700s. And that's because it's a lot. Right now, I'll show you this. This is the uh, ETH gas station where you can see that the price of Ethereum right now is at 290. Oh my, this is so expensive. 295, 180, 166. Normally you want these probably like in the, lately it's just in the like the 70s, 80s, 90s. You know, you feel okay about that? Less than just a, less than 100. But at this point, it must be some type of gas war or something going on right now. Um, so the price of gas right now, you probably try to send some, it'd probably be an insane amount. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah, the price for gas now, you see, is 0. 0.4 Ethereum, which is 100 and, oh, it's going up, point, almost 0. 0.5, 0. 0.05. So it's something going on around gas is very expensive. But with all of that, you know, here about that positivity and positivity being if there's someone in your life that has guided you on a path that has made you a better person, reach out to them electronically through the medium of the comment sections of this video and write them something and then share this video with them and say, hey, look what I wrote about you is there. Into the stories from four dollars to over three point one million. A minor minor transfers fifty sleeping Bitcoin. So sleeping Bitcoin or Bitcoin that were mined and left. This one's for eleven years. So every ten minutes, the block is made, and that block. You know, long story short. You know, and I don't mind repeating this over and over. I think you gotta kind of need to hear it over and over to you understand it. What do you mean? So when I talk about a blockchain, is these blocks are made every ten minutes. They're chained together. Um, each block in the block before and a block after it. So that way, if you try to tamper one block, you can't because there you you have to break open. Not you can't break open. You know, it's not just one block. You gotta break open. You gotta break open blocks on both ends, which are attached to blocks on other ends. And it's all you know. So it's in. So far, it's been impossible to hack. Uh, but anyway, the, the blocks themselves is for these computers to do this work. It's a reward. And the reward is awarded every 10 minutes. And back then, 11 years ago, the rewards for solving the, the uh, equation that won the block were paying out at 50, 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. For the reward, the computer that, you know, solved the equation. Now it's like 6.25. It's been several halvings. Not several. One, two, three. Yeah, several halvings since then. So three halvings. The three halvings have happened. So the first award for 50 Bitcoin per. Anyway, this person who had a reward. And a lot of people back then just get their rewards and just put it aside. Because it was Bitcoins where you probably had about some of these people probably like Four, four or five thousand bitcoins. So another reward was wasn't you know wasn't a big deal at the time, and so some of them sat idle. But this person just moved fifty of them or organization or whatever it is, and the percentage gain of those fifty coins was seventy six million two hundred forty nine thousand nine hundred percent. If cashed out. <laughs> Well, it would be nice if you knew enough to get it and it was mining Bitcoin back then where you could have been doing it on your uh, computer at home. But this was uh, 2010, so this is super early. You had to be super deep into um, 
kind of cutting edge punk uh, technology to be like, okay, and then has saved it, have the wherewithal to not only be mining it, but have saved it over this time and the patience just to let it grow when it's kind of been doing what it's been doing all this time. So you got you to gotta admire. China's trillion dollar mistake. Are they trying to reverse it? Earlier this year, China embarked on what it considered the biggest crypto crackdown to date. The country has had a tumultuous relationship with the crypto space in the past, announcing various bans. But the severity of this last crackdown has led to the exit of miners out of what was said to be the crypto mining capital of the world. The impacts of the crackdown on the market has not has not been mildly felt either. I don't believe this. They're going to try to say, oh, after the crackdown, it Tank the price of crypto. Nah, just like when Elon uh, said Tesla would no longer accept that. Now, look, it, it, for a day or so, but the market is going to do what the market is going to do. So in all of that, India now is I don't even I may have a story about that in a couple of days where India now is going back and forth about what their plans are, what they're going to do with crypto. Are they going to ban it or let it, you know, no, it's over in terms of trying to manipulate the market. You know, we we we've reached escape velocity in that regard. Best of luck with the lower caps. Not so much Bitcoin. But now and then you talk about how Michael talking Taylor, but Sailor, the CEO of MicroStrategy, said that, and I agree, China was making a trillion dollar mistake by pushing the miners out of China, by not allowing their citizens to own digital currencies because they were trying to control the market with their own digital one, which is their own digital currency, which, you know, of course, they they essentially is not is not decentralized in the slightest in the slightest. Before we go any further, none of this is financial advice, um, advice about plumbing, advice about uh uh, hepatology or about anything that you can imagine this is all entertainment i did not tell you to do anything I just told you what i was doing sometimes some things i'm thinking about sometimes i tell you things i'm not gonna do and then you may say yeah you gonna do that because i got a friend who oh what <laughs> go bust his chops because he he watches this and throws it back at me so <laughs> he doesn't always do the opposite but I can guess what he's going to do. Now I'm busting your chops. Go blue. You know, we go getting that. Anyway, saying that, I was recorded as a halftime. I had to make sure, you know, the game ain't started. We were still up, though. So, yeah, yeah. Go blue. <laughs> um, so, China used to run the market in terms of the hash rate, the mining power that was behind the cryptocurrencies, the most devices that were mining cryptos united states took that over because they pushed them out it says states like florida and texas have passed favorable laws to entice the miners to their regions and it has paid off as the united states now has the highest largest i'm sorry it's highest largest hash rate in the world although it's still not as high as what china commanded before the crackdown so but China's having problems of its own. Property crisis underpins China's economic slowdown. Real estate has become the dominant investor in China because it isn't taxed. Now, you want your mind blown? Let's go with this. China does not have property taxes. So you can own an entire apartment building and not pay taxes on that space. So for us in America, we play if you own uh, property. You know, if if you own property, either your own home or other properties, if you're so blessed to be, or if you worked hard. I mean, look, I still think it's a blessing regardless, working hard or not, you know, we, we're blessed with everything we have um, or don't have in that regard. The There's been bobcat kittens in my yard, so if I jerk, it's because, you know, I'm trying to make sure I catch him or make sure mom ain't gonna come jump through the window. <laughs> <laughs> joking about the last part don't believe that would happen at all that would be insanity but who never knows also gators out there so you can kind of guess where i'm at um but yeah so things are popping official economic figures released that china shows that china's 
GDP grew by just 4.9% in the third quarter. Now, they used to have double-digit growth. Painful slowdown comes as China grapples with debt concerns, shipping disruptions, and ongoing electricity shortages. And also the Cold War that's starting with the United States, or that's been going on, but as in earnest with the United States and its allies. Also, China is having a bit, I'm going to say like anyway, flip it, but it appears that COVID is becoming a bigger issue than they're, than they're able to control with their measures. Also, Russia is having a really hard time with COVID now. If any of these places, you know, you pray for that they find a way to um, help their citizens and, you know, you don't want to see nobody suffer because of, of anybody's decisions. The country's real estate crisis at the core of most of these problems. The industry has five trillion with the T dollars in debt. It didn't say dollars, but I'm adding that. With multiple firms in trouble affecting much of the Chinese economy. So real estate has become the most dominant investment in China because there's no property tax. How can you even imagine that? How can you even imagine that? There's no property tax. That means zero cost for holding on to apartments as prices rise. 80% of the household wealth is now tied up in real estate. Much of it rooted in the handover of Dan Wei, work unit apartments to private ownerships in the 1990s. So is a large portion of corporate holdings. So now they're looking at adding property tax, but that would mean people would have to register. And a lot of officials over in China, even though China is this communist overall going to share and Xi Jinping that the president now is looking to turn away from all these billionaires and and crazy rich Asians. And now we're going to give the money to the people. It is still a large elite population there with a tremendous amount of wealth. And they would have to now disclose all their wealth because now they have to disclose who owns what buildings because there's no property tax. So you can just hold this property. It goes up in price, sell it. Not, it, 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 you know, it, I don't even know how they would know who owns what unless there's some, like in terms of uh, if you rent it out to people, you have to register for it to be a landlord. But in terms of no property tax, There's no property tax on your books in your house. Who knows what books you have in your house? You bought them, right? You think people still kept a record with books you bought? So if you just want to know how, how quickly that rabbit hole can go in terms of how uh, ownership of things can be hidden and lost over time, take it something simple that has no tax that you know of that's in, that's in your house. So. So this is um, interesting because this collapse of the property and it seems that a lot a lot of the household income is tied up in the property is much bigger, you know, than I think a lot of people understand and can really impact us if, the, if China doesn't get a handle on their economy. You know, we're, we're trying to excise ourselves, remove ourselves away from their economy. But if it doesn't happen faster or in a way that doesn't insulate our allies as well, then, you know, the same way the United States dragged down with our mortgage crisis, our prime mortgage crisis here, the world's economy, China can do easily do the same because it's the second. Sometimes some people think it's the, the world's uh, number one economy, but, you know, either way, it's a huge part. So we'll keep an eye, continue to keep an eye on China's real estate crisis over there and its impact on us or wherever you may be. If you're in China, I don't know if you can watch this in China. It'd be crazy if I was this, but hey, over there as well where you're at. Be safe. Is space elevator technology to the moon possible with today's technology? I don't know why I add technology in there a couple of times, but is a space elevator. So. Long and short of it, and I'll kind of go into what their idea, which is actually pretty sweet, and I like it a lot, which is, first I didn't understand it, but then when I did, I was like, oh, oh, okay, cool. A space elevator has always been this idea of, why don't we just build, imagine on the ground a pole that you just build so high up, it's in space. <laughs> and that way, if you want to go to space, you don't have to use rockets, you can just have some type of device that just rides you up your pole up to space, right? And, and, and that's, you know, 
it seems like a simple idea, but very smart people have been thinking of ways to how this would work. And basically, our material science, our, our ability to make materials doesn't, because you have to have, besides it just flailing all around, you have to have something of sufficient mass on it. So we have, you know, imagine our planet, our planet, and then that's, you know, think of like a string coming off, but it's, you know, fairly thick. And then you have to have some type of mass on the end to keep it in orbit, in geo geosynchronous orbit, to be able to keep that thing. So even though the Earth is spinning, that this stays in the same place, right, for it to be safe. So theoretically, it could be done. Our just our when we do the calculations, it appears that none of the materials we can make, none of carbon nanofibers may get close, but it appears that the the materials we can make at this moment cannot withstand the stress of the design, in other words. So while the ideal is sound, we, you know, like I said, such a cable would need to be incredibly strong. Carbon nanotubes are a potential material that can never be made long enough, but options available today are just too feeble. So a space elevator. So one idea is to build a space elevator, a cable stretching from Earth to orbit that provides an easy way to climb into space. The big advantage is that the climbing power can process can be powered by solar energy and thus will require no on no on <laughs> on board fuel. Uh, it's a bit of a tongue twister for me. Oh, I mispronounce a lot of things. I get things wrong. Look it up for yourself. Trust nobody. Trust nothing. Don't even trust what you look up for yourself. Get multiple sources and see what the, the, the synthesis of them together. And then, you know, always ask God for wisdom and guidance and best of luck. <laughs> so the idea of a space elevator, boom, right. Awesome, right? So the, these individuals, Zephyr Pignore from the University of Cambridge and Emily Sanford at Columbia came with the idea of, okay, maybe we can't, don't have the technology to build a space elevator just yet from Earth, but if we start from the moon and work towards Earth, then we do have the technology and materials to make one that doesn't quite reach Earth because we're not at that point where we can attach one to Earth from the moon, but <laughs> we can get close enough to where we can get into Earth orbit. And now, you know, in terms of space travel and orbital mechanics, there's low orbit, then there's Earth's orbit, and then there's the lunar orbit where we leave and, and go between Earth's gravity well a point where there's a the effect of the moon's gravity well on Earth kind of cancel each other out and then into the moon's uh, gravity. And if you build from the moon and work towards the Earth, you can dangle it like into that gravity well between the Earth and the moon at minimum cost in terms of um, cost. When you say cost, you mean energy needed to maintain in that space, that kind of energy cost. And then you're able to get into Earth orbit, which we're able to do fairly easy, and then push over to the moon much easier through this elevator. Because the problem now we have is we get into Earth orbit. We do that a lot, but we don't go into lunar orbit that often. We haven't. I don't think we've done it with manned missions since the 70s or so. I, I may be mistaken about that. I know we're going to start recently. You know, we talked about it here with the Lunar Gateway, building a space station in that kind of range between, well, actually in lunar orbit, and then having with the Artemis missions, having our astronauts go back down to the moon lunar surface from that space station. But if we have a now a, a an elevator built into Earth's orbit from there, it'd be much easier to do things wherever we need to and then attach to the elevator and zip to lunar orbit to the lunar surface. You know, at, at minimum energy cost, you don't have to use rocket fuel. You can use solar wind, solar wind. You can design systems that can travel that. Um, so fascinating stuff, super fascinating stuff. And this is a picture of kind of their um, idea where you have the moon and you have this elevator that goes into the Earth's gravity well. And then our ability to get us to that point and, you know, 
probably even have like a yeah a, a, a station there like you know get in there have a station and be able to take elevators back and forth between the moon and this the station so this probably will be built in our lifetime and it's awesome to be thinking that these things will be here and we may even get to travel and visit them one day not going to keep you long you know how i go i love you you love you god loves us and that's all that matters